Today's Namaste Yoga continues our Durga series with Skanda Mata and Nurturing Mother. Hello and welcome to episode 186 of Namaste Yoga. We're continuing our Durga series with Skanda Mata today. And today's episode is about nurturing mother energy. And I'd like to dedicate this episode to some of the really nurturing people in my life that have given me a lot of nurturing energy. One person is Stephanie Nemeth Moore. Another one is Rashmi Sharma, who is my Sanskrit teacher. She just has the most wondering, wonderful, nurturing mother en- mothering energy. And the other one is our clothing sponsor, uh, Squeeze Donna. She just is one of the most uh, nurturing, mothering energies in my life as well. So I will dedicate this episode to those wonderful mothering energies in my life. We'll start today's episode with a testimonial from Victoria from Facebook. She says, you are such a tremendous blessing to me as your classes are so very timely for my life and experiences off my yoga mat. This class, and she was referring to just a couple of episodes back, Namaste Yoga on Chandra Ganta, focuses on peace and serenity through the various postures and I found them both relaxing and beautiful. Dying Warrior was an emotional release for me since I have been struggling with the notion that I have to always be so emotionally strong for everyone that depends on me. And I think a lot of us can relate to that. Yes, I am a warrior. And yes, I am strong. However, the twists and turns of life can make the strongest of the strong feel weary at times. I never want to give up. I just want to find peace to rest, regroup, and connect with my inner warrior goddess. And that's just such a great description of dying warrior pose. Victoria says, I love the Durga series. I truly benefit from the fierce protection, wisdom, love, and courage that I channeled from the beautiful stories of her. As I move into over the moon pose, it began to rain. The sound was so beautiful and serene that I knew it was a moment that it rained just for me. I could have stayed in that posture all day. This posture is my newfound favorite, so thank you. As always, the chanting brought the class to a beautiful conclusion. Namaste, Victoria. So thank you for that, Victoria. Also, just to remind you about, we offer this series weekly that we put out this podcast weekly so that you can have a weekly yoga class, but we also put out a daily video podcast as well. We just came from filming our And some of them are weekly features, and then we answer your questions daily as well. So we just came from filming a weekly feature, which is Thirsty Thursdays. It's a juicing video. And then we also film a weekly feature called Smoothie Saturdays. And then the rest of the days of the week, we usually answer your questions and let you know about things that are going on in Namaste Yoga world. So for example, on Monday, probably we're going to be letting you know about... Erica, who's going to be taking over leading our Spanish community on the on our Facebook page and and things like that. So it's great if you would like to be plugged into that. We post daily on my website at melissawest.com and you can also sign up on my website to get a weekly digest version of that or a daily email in your inbox where you get a (laughs) 
<laughs> where you get an email every day so that you can know what's going on. I'm mirroring Tim when he's doing behind the camera, which is a bit dorky. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I had, the sleep fairy skipped me last night, so you're going to have to like ignore me a bit today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> and be your own best teacher today. <laughs> um, thank you to Squeeze for my yoga clothing. I am wearing Ganesh top today and actually Ganesh capris today because Skanda Mata is Kartike's uh, mother who is Ganesh's brother, so she's also Ganesh's mother as well. So she's poverty as well. You know, these Durga is poverty and you know the way Rashmi explains it to me it's like all these goddesses and gods are all one and it's like different outfits that they put on each day and the different feelings the way they're feeling each day and it's just such a great way to explain it so um anyway thank you to squeeze for our clothing and just to remind you the skirts that i'm wearing in the juicing and smoothie videos and and the, when i answer your questions are from squeezed and they're totally awesome they're the bamboo skirts and um, i just didn't know if you guys knew that because they're totally amazing <laughs> love them it feels like wearing pajamas but they look like silk they're so gorgeous and i get so many compliments on them they actually turn a lot of heads <laughs> So they're amazing and they're comfortable enough to wear every day in and out of your house. You can dress them up and dress them down. They're, they're awesome. Um, and also thanks to Dusky Leaf for our mats and our blocks. Today you're going to need two blocks to get started. Let me show you how we're going to start. So the first block you're going to set a little higher and the second block on its side lengthwise. And we're going to start with supported fish pose, Matsyasana. Salamba Matsyasana. And this is the bottom of the lower block is going to rest at the bottom of your rib cage. And then the taller block is going to support your head. This is going to open up your heart to begin. And your palms can rest facing up towards the ceiling or the sky, depending on if you're outside. And if you don't have blocks and you have a bolster, you could use a bolster instead. And you can rest back here while I start to let you know about Skanda Mata. Skanda Mata is the mother of Skanda, so Skanda Mata, Skanda's mother, <laughs> uh, who is also known as Kumara Kartike. So Kumara means like master. So he's not a mister yet, he's a master, young baby, <laughs> in his infant form, who would later lead in the war against the demons. She is worshipped on the fifth day of Navratri. And on this day, the devotee moves up to the fifth chakra, your throat chakra, the Vishuddha chakra. The fifth chakra is about speaking and living your truth in the world. And so it's kind of interesting that Skanda Mata gives the gift of differentiation of right from wrong to the world. It's said by the grace of Skanda Mata, even the fool becomes an ocean of knowledge. Skanda Mata holds Kartike in his infant form on her lap. Skanda Mata rides a lion. She has four arms and three eyes. So her three eyes would be her two real eyes and then her third eye for vision. In her upper arm, she holds a lotus, baby skanda, and in her lower arm, she holds a lotus flower. In her left arm, she raises her lower hand to grant a boon, so that's like your wishes, and in her lower hand, she holds a lotus, so she holds two lotuses. As the mother of skanda, she's known as skanda mata. Skanda is the son of Shiv and Parvati. She is the motherly form of Durga. 
She is benevolent. And so this week we will focus on offering ourselves mothering and nurturing energy. Some of us have been blessed with nurturing and attentive mothers. And so we know how to have that energy in our lives. And others of us have had to learn how to cultivate those qualities within us. One of the cornerstones of my sadhana, my personal practice, is loving kindness meditation. From the original phrases of loving kindness, of metta meditation, in the sacred texts, the teaching tell us, as a mother would risk her own life to protect her child, her only child, so towards all beings should one cultivate a boundless heart. With loving kindness for the whole world should one cultivate a boundless heart. In today's practice, we will focus on nurturing our own selves so that we may go out into the world with a boundless heart. We will fill ourselves with loving kindness and nurturing, mothering energy so that we in turn may share the love of our boundless hearts with the world. And so we will begin with the phrases of loving kindness for ourselves. And so repeat these phrases silently to yourself. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be safe from inner and outer dangers. May I be well in body and mind. May I be at ease and happy. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be safe from inner and outer dangers. May I be well in body and mind. May I be at ease and happy. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be safe from inner and outer dangers. May I be well in body and mind. May I be at ease and happy. Then go ahead and take a moment and set an intention for your practice today of what it is you would like to receive from practicing your yoga today. And when you feel ready, you can go ahead and wiggle and stretch out. And bend your knees, tuck your chin, roll to your right side and make your way off your blocks and lie back down onto the ground with your knees bent and your feet flat on the ground. Okay, with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor, I'm going to do some neck and shoulder releases here. So, as I mentioned, Skanda Mata is worshipped on the fifth day of Navratri, and this is all about your throat chakra. So, we'll do some neck and shoulder releases. I'm going to inhale in the center, exhale, roll your head to the right side. Inhale in the center. Exhale and roll your head to the left side.
And this weekend, I'm going to be going and doing some training in Toronto about fascial release for your hands and your feet with Sue Hitzman of the MELT method. And I'm going to be offering those classes on the membership site. Hand and feet classes. And the reason why I thought of it now is because the hand classes, that releasing the hands helps to release your neck. It's really cool. So I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be tomorrow by the time you see this video. Okay, now you're gonna hold on to your elbows, let your shoulders be heavy. Inhale, exhale, roll your head to the right and lower your elbows to the right. You know, one of our members from Italy, Viola, is already doing some of the melt techniques and she's finding them really helpful for her neck as well. And then come back to the center, leave your head in the center. Exhale, lower your elbows to one side. Inhale, center. Breathe out, lower your elbows to the other side. Breathe in center. Okay, great. And then you're going to lower your elbows to the right and roll your head to the left. So counter rotation here. Oh, by the way, I think this is the first time we're using our new mic packs on Namaste Yoga. Here they are. And we've been using them on our daily videos for a few days now. I'm forgetting where I am because I'm so excited. And oh, and we filmed for the membership site with them this all this week. And man, oh man, are we ever feeling like we are spoiled now because there is absolutely no more drop sound and everything is easy now. <laughs> It's like night and day. It's amazing how great it is when you have the right equipment and we are just so grateful. And we did a whole blog post on how thankful we are. So it's just so much easier now. Okay, and then come back to the center. And we're going to do 
Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, and that is bridge pose. Your hands down by the side of your body. We're going to do this as a vinyasa. So you'll press into your feet. You're going to inhale and lift up as your arms come overhead so that we really open up all your intercostal muscles here. Breathe into your side ribs. And then exhale and lower down, arc your arms back down. Inhale, arc up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. We finally got that strength series, strength building series, all filmed for the members. Tim is working really hard behind the scenes to get it on the membership site. And hold here, let's just hold this pose here for about five or so breaths. And then lower yourself down. We're going to roll to your side and make your way up onto all fours. So should we tempt fate? This is where we used to get a lot of drops down is if I would talk and put my mic on at the same time. So, oh my goodness, I'm going to keep talking and I'm putting my mic on at the same time. And we didn't get any drops down. These these things are the bomb. <laughs> Does that mean I can talk continuously now? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, cat pose. You're gonna take your hands underneath your shoulders, spread your fingers nice and wide. If your wrists bother you, you can always come onto fists. You're just gonna warm up your spine by exhaling and rounding up through your back. And inhaling and arching. From cat pose, we'll come into thread the needle pose. So take your right arm, open it up to the side. I still have to do a thread the needle tutorial. David Eng has been requesting that forever. <laughs> In my spare time, I'm gonna come up with one. Take your right arm. Let's maybe just really break it down today while we're here. Take your right shoulder to the ground. Now you wanna make sure you're resting on your shoulder and your back here. That's gonna make a big difference. And also another thing that makes a difference is tucking your chin here. Also, remember to ground down through your shin so you're taking some of the weight in your legs. That'll help a lot too. An option for this pose, you don't have to do it from here, is also to come back and do it in child's pose. So that's a modification for this pose if that pose is really bothering your neck. So that should help a lot, those things.
Think about rotating from your rib cage. The intention of this pose is to warm up your spine, release your spine, it's a twist. And then release this side. Let's do this on the other side. So inhale, reach up. Exhale, you're gonna bring your left arm through the space between your right wrist and your left knee. So again, land on your shoulder here. Tuck your chin. Press down through the top of your left foot and your left shin. So you're taking some of the weight into your back body and out of your neck. Remember, you can always do this from child's pose as well. And then come on out of this pose and we're gonna do lion's breath to clear our throats for our fifth chakra here so with lion's pose you sit kneeling if that's comfortable for you you can always put a block between your legs here spread your lion's paws nice and wide and you inhale you exhale you stick your tongue out down to your chin you turn your eyes up to your third eye. So that's kind of cool that Skandamata, they mentioned that she had three eyes, right? The third eye here. And you, you reach your chest forward and you stick your tongue out like that. So we'll do three lion's breaths. Two more. And one more. Great. From here, we're going to come up to standing. Okay, we're all set to go again. We just had to move. It's been so hot and now the clouds come in. It's freezing. So it's kind of nice to be cold because it's been so hot for so long. Okay, we're going to do four movements of the neck for your throat chakra here. You're just going to drop your ear to your shoulder. You can bring your head back to the center and slowly lower your right ear towards your right shoulder. And then bring your head up to the center, drop your chin down to your chest. Lift your head up. You're going to turn your head like an owl to the left until you feel a stretch on the right side of your neck. to the other side. Mm -hmm. 
and then circle your head around in front. And bring your head back to the center. And we're going to do uh, exercise now to bring energy into your feet. And I've been racking my brain trying to remember what this is called. Qigong, I finally got it. It's a Qigong exercise to bring energy into your feet. So you're gonna stand on your right foot. You're gonna lift your left foot and you inhale, you exhale, you give a little kick. And then place your left foot down and just feel the difference between your left and your right leg. Great. And then let's do this with your right leg now. place this leg down. Great. So this is great because the intention behind this is to bring the energy into your legs because we're going to be doing shoulder sedan, sarvangasana, and your legs are going to come up into the air and so instead of them being all wobbly and willy-nilly, they're going to have energy and strength and they'll have somewhere to go because they've got, you've got strong legs now. Also, we're going to do a balancing pose. Now we're going to do tree pose, rikshasana. So stand on your right leg, turn your left leg out to the side. This should also hopefully help you with balance. We're going to do rikshasana with a mudra for emotional balance. Uh, no, a mudra to prevent exhaustion. And I thought that was a good one for nurturing. And let me show you the mudra first. The way it works is you take your hands in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making life difficult for Tim Post production. So sorry. And you place them on your earlobes and you just gently tug down on your earlobes. So that's what we'll do when we're in tree pose Vrikshasana. Take your left leg out to the side. You're going to place your left foot somewhere on the inside of your right leg, either above or below your knee, but not on your knee joint. And then take that mudra for. Um, Preventing exhaustion. I need this food throw today really badly. Okay, let me get on that. <laughs> oh, goodness. Here we go. So you just gently pull down on your earlobes. And this mudra comes from Sabrina Mesco's book, and it's under this section. I just love this little section of the book. It's, it's mudras for mothers. And then release this side from your body and stand on your left foot. Turn your right toes out to the side. You're going to place your right foot either above or below your kneecap. Take your hands, place them on your earlobes again. Gently pull down on your earlobes. Mudra for preventing exhaustion.
Okay, fabulous. And then release this posture from your body. I thought for shoulder stand today for Savangasana, we would do supported shoulder stand. Because we are doing nurturing class, we're just gonna take it easy. You use your block for that. We'll come on down. This is a really nice way of doing shoulder stand. We'll start in bridge pose with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. Press into your feet. Place the block underneath your pelvis. And then just lift your feet into the air and it should be effortless to be here. This is a great pose to restore energy as well if you didn't sleep so well. Then to come out of this pose, bend your knees, place your feet flat on the floor, press into your feet, take the block out. And for our back bend today, we're going to do fish pose, matsyasana. For your throat chakra, it's a really nice heart opener as well. We haven't done it in a long time. And you're very welcome to go back to the supported fish pose that we did at the beginning of the class with the two blocks, if this pose doesn't feel good in your body. If you'd like to join us here, you tuck your hands in underneath your legs and notice how your hands go all the way down your legs, past your buttocks. And then you press into your elbows and your forearms. Your buttocks stays on the ground, resting on your hands. Your chest comes off the ground and your head comes back down onto the ground. And then press into your forearms again to come down. You'll roll off your arms and hug your knees into your chest. Hold on behind your knees. From here we'll come up to seated so you can either roll to the side or tuck your chin rock yourself up we're going to do sages twist the way that works is we're going to do like zigzag legs here and just twist to one side
and then switch the way you have your legs zigzagged. So zigzag your legs with your knees pointing to the left and you'll take your right hand to the outside of your left knees. and come back to the center. We'll do tortoise pose, Kuramasana. I find this to be quite a nurturing pose. I think, I don't know, for me that turning inward is quite nurturing. So you create a diamond shape in your legs. Your heels are away from your pelvis in this pose. You lift your knees and take your arms underneath, hold on to your feet and fold forward. If you have a bolster, you could put it lengthwise along here and rest on your bolster. Breathe into your back body, feel breath movement into your back body. And slowly roll up. And we'll finish with our mantra and our mudra. So, our mudra is for emotional balance and it comes also from Sabrina Mesco's book and it's part of that mothering <laughs> series. So, before this mudra, you're supposed to drink a glass of water to balance the water in your system. And water is all about emotional balance too. So we'll have a, a glass of water. And then you sit with a straight spine with your palms open, including your thumbs underneath your armpits and you give yourself a hug inhale lift your shoulders up and exhale lower your shoulders down and relax and the mantra that we're going to do relates to the metta meditation that we did at the beginning it is loka samatha sukino bhavantu which means, may all beings everywhere be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute to the happiness and freedom for all. And it's often sung at the end of yoga classes. And we will sing it today. We'll start with an Om, and we'll sing Loka Samatha Sukino Bhavantu, and then we'll finish with Om Shanti 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 Om. Okay, and we'll sing it three times today. And it will be in the show notes so you can check it as well. Okay, so let's start with the breath and a sigh and then we'll sing Om and we'll start. Om. 
Loka Samasta Sukino Bavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Bavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Bavantu Om Shanti 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 Okay, so you can finish your practice seated like this. You can go ahead and rest back in Shavasana to receive and integrate your practice. So gradually allow your breath to deepen. Begin to wiggle and stretch out. Bend your knees. Roll to your right side. And gradually make your way up to sitting. Thank you for joining me for episode 186 of Namaste Yoga. I'll see you on the membership site and I'll see you next week for episode 187. Namaste. We're loving the new audio. <laughs> we can film from really far away and we've had no drop sound for this entire episode. Makes it so much easier. And I can talk while I'm wearing my mic pack and moving it around and super awesome. So this was the first episode of Namaste Yoga that we filmed with our new mic packs and it was so much fun and it was so easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. <laughs> Yay!